Awesome. Looks like we're going live. We'll see. Give it a few minutes for everybody to join. If you're joining and you're here in the audience, um, could you give us a little emoji or leave a little comment, something to let us know that, you know, our attendance is, you know, you're here, you can hear us, everything's working. I can definitely hear you. Okay, great. Love that. Look at that. We're live. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Hello, internet. Awesome. Great. Last one did. Cool. Well, let's give everybody one more minute to get started. Dana, thank you for joining us. We'll do a proper introduction in a second. Um, and then we can get started. Today's going to be a, a great episode. So awesome. Hello, hello. Yeah, we would love to see where everybody is joining from. Leave a comment in the chat. Cool. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, welcome to Christina's Compliance Corner. This is our second episode. Um, and we have a lovely, lovely, lovely uh, special guest here, Dana Mueller. Um, he is one of the absolute OGs here at Leica, an in-house expert. Um, we'll give him an opportunity to introduce himself, some of his background, but uh, very, very excited to have him here so that we can talk about all things cybersecurity and the holidays because like you, you know, you join this for a reason and uh, you can definitely tell that there's going to be a lot to talk about today. Um, so we want everybody to be safe and vigilant this holiday season. And, you know, we're excited to talk a little bit more about that and how you can protect yourself and your family. So welcome, Dana. Feel free to introduce yourself. Hey, thanks a lot, Christina. I, I'm Dana Mueller. I'm um, one of the actual OG members of this company, kind of a founding member in a way. I think I was a name on a whiteboard prior to starting. Um, I'm also our original CISO and um, our first compliance architect. So it's been pretty fun to watch this company grow from zero to a million where we're at right now. And I'm um, looking forward to discussing holiday trends and some tips to keep you and your family safe. Awesome. Very, very excited to have him on. Uh, Dana definitely does a lot of um, thought leadership and speaking outside of uh, just this special guest appearance. So make sure to check out like us um, LinkedIn and the website as well, which we can post in the channel so that you can look at some of the other events and things that he has done in the past couple of months, especially. So with that being said, um, I definitely want to get started. We can talk about the first few things. Um, you know, we'll give you a little outline, but we're going to be talking about a few different topics, specifically around um, a rise in e-commerce in general. Everybody is holiday shopping. Let's let's be honest, and a lot of it is happening online. So we'll talk a little bit about that and ways to protect yourself and things to look out for so that you don't end up getting caught in any less than positive activity, let's say. Um, and then we will talk a little bit a bit uh, more about some of the common things that are, you know, happen all year long, but are definitely heightened. So phishing attacks, ransomware, things like that. And then finally, we're going to close it out with tips and tricks to protect yourself and your family so that you don't become a victim this season. Um, you can just continue to spread the holiday cheer for all far and near, essentially. So that's what Dana and I are going to do. So awesome. We'll get started. Um, we're going to start with the rise in e-commerce. So Dana and, you know, rest of the audience would love to kind of hear, you know, I think probably with a show of hands, everybody is doing some uh, holiday shopping right now, right? Definitely me. Definitely me. Um, what are you kind of seeing as being some of the prominent issues or, you know, what, what does this mean for cyber activity and potential gaps or cyber crime that would potentially happen during this time? Oh yeah, I think definitely around any holiday season, right? Where there's hype and heightened um, media presence around uh, shopping and retail sales, we see an increased uh, amount of phishing attacks from email, right? So people sending things as like, I don't know, 
uh, your favorite Costco, Sam's Club, that sort of thing. But it's really like Bob's Hot Gmail dot com forward slash Wix site <laughs> forward slash look at my OnlyFans forward slash <laughs> give me a subscription forward slash it goes to TikTok forward slash my kid pays for it. And now I'm wondering why there's an OnlyFans sub on my credit card. That is not. Not a good look, but no. it happens. And it happens a lot more than we think it does, um, primarily because we have a couple of factors happening, right? Our, our families are, have increased access to a mobile device, so a phone or, or a tablet or whatever you're doing. Um, and then secondarily, we're also a lot more free with our credit cards or, or just giving out cash and money in yeah. general, right, through wallets. And so um, a lot of folks, I think, don't spend enough time setting up the right gates properly, right? To make, to make sure that you've got some, some layered protection mechanisms in place. Or I think you and I have chatted about before defense in depth, which yeah. is an oddly weird way to apply that back to here. So yeah. I don't know, that's I, that. And, and to me that happens around Christmas, Thanksgiving, right? And then major, major holidays, you see this spike in, in phishing and social engineering attacks. Yeah, but, absolutely. I definitely think that that's one of the things that is the most prevalent. Um, I also think, you know, we are um, a lot more willing and freely giving away so much data that we might not be thinking twice mm -hmm. about. You know, you see something off of um, an ad or you saw like an in Instagram influencer post that you should buy X, Y, Z thing um, directly from their site and you've never bought anything from there before. So you're putting in all new data into a new system that you have never come across before and now, and you have no idea about, you know, I think a lot of times what we forget about is in an effort to support different organizations, different businesses, obviously e-commerce is huge. And so many of these businesses, small or big are, you know, making a lot of their money around this time. Mm -hmm. They definitely don't have all the security practices in place that a Walmart, for example, would have. Um, so what do you think about that? You know, what is what would you say is kind of like the the trade off for shopping big box um, or a little bit smaller? Do you think exclusively it is some of those smaller uh, shops that are going to get hit more? Or do you kind of see those big, big brick, those big box offices like getting actually hit more prevalently i think a lot of our a lot of our brick and mortar stores right um or even big box stores they are all they've all had to pivot within reason to e-commerce since uh the like the pandemic happened and so we actually see a lot greater risk with some of those folks not taking um, the full amount of protection mechanisms or, or being aware of what they could do to protect their users. And so they'll sign up for whatever services, 1995 or 2995, to protect your customer data. Maybe it has some sort of credit card fulfillment engine and that kind of thing. And, and, but maybe it's not great, you know? And so I think you've got, you've got a larger list of things as, as a retailer or a business owner to, to try to work through to figure out how to protect that. And not everybody's aware of that. And we're just, we're seeing, I think, I, I saw some stats at some point where it said that like, you know, we're, we're up like 60 or 70% easily in a, in an attack surface since the pandemic happened, since people pivoted to online. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things there's, if you think about the massive quantity of money and spending that happens around e-commerce just mm -hmm. around the holiday season, I think there's like going off of some of those statistics, like there's like $109 billion being spent just during the holiday season. Think wow, about- that's a lot. Well, if you also think about like all of the people who are putting hard-earned money, especially during, you know, a recession and things like that, they might not be thinking necessarily about their mm. data when they're actually doing something so thoughtful, like purchasing a gift or doing online shopping for somebody or things right. like that. So um, that's kind of all part of it. And actually, as a caveat, like a side note to that as well, um, I did want to talk about, you know, a lot of times it is about like purchasing goods. Um, but one of the things I know you and I had talked about, which is kind of pretty incredibly prevalent as well, um, gift cards. How many <laughs> gift cards are you purchasing over a holiday season, for example, for yourself, for your mom, for your grandmother, for your neighbor down the street, for Everybody. your kid's teacher? So, um, you know, yeah. I think like 
there's a lot that comes with that. And I would love to hear you talk a little bit more about, you know, what are some of those potential threats um, that come with that? Because at the end of the day too, you know, that's just another little piece of plastic that uh, does a little swipey swipey and then magically things appear in your hands. But uh, talk a little yeah. bit more about some of the dangers that even those credit cards pose um, after purchase, for example. I'll definitely talk about that. And then I want to put a pin in something that I thought about too. Um, yeah. Recently, we saw that um, that Instagram avatar app take hold, right? Oh boy. And, and we should talk for a minute about subscriptions and hidden subscription fees and data, data and stuff around that mm -hmm. after we talk about gift cards. Cause I think it's, it's, yeah. it's, that's, does an, that's another place where people play is like, let's release, let's release apps over, mm -hmm. over the holidays and try to pull okay. money in that way. Absolutely. So gift cards is an interesting topic. I think a couple things. One, um, somebody posted a channel, posted uh, over here in the channel about um, how they prefer to shop uh, local business, right? Prioritizing small and local businesses. So that's great. Um, if you can go into a store and pick up a gift card from like, you know, a lot of times when you go to your favorite store, they have like the gift card turn style. And they're all generally, th those cards are all put together by within reason, sort of the same vendor or company. So gen generally in big air quotes, if you're in a store and they've got some sort of vendor with some product that's at that level, right? There's, there's going to be some, version of hygiene around that and some level of safety because it's been vetted to get into that store doesn't mean it's perfect it means it's better than picking it off of maybe amazon or yeah. bob's great gift cards mm -hmm. um so right. so a couple things make sure you understand where it's coming from what's the source what's it, is it authentic so do a little research um i would say do less research if you're going to the big round thing in the store just grab whatever you need get your mcdonald's you know your your netflix or whatever you're doing but then after that if you if you need to pivot online I mean, honestly, like, and I don't know if there's a Bob's gift cards.com. So apologies, Bob, if this is your business and I'm saying, telling people not to go there, but like, if you're going to start buying gift cards outside of like a, a, a local store, then buy them from, try to find something that's something that's reputable, do some research. Um, you could buy them from another big box store online, but a lot of those people have marketplaces now. So you don't actually know where you're getting it from. So be aware of that, of those points. Um, when you're shopping on Amazon, for example, Amazon has its vendors listed who sells the stuff. So look look at that. Amazon's gift card subscriptions or gift cards um, come from a number of different vendors. So just try to be really high, you know, be really careful about that. A lot of times, too, what we'll find is that especially if you're buying them for your family, like your younger ones or, or, or extended family, um, let's, let's focus maybe on more like immediate family. Um, get those things like if, if you're going to if you have younger kids. Uh, get and we'll talk about this later. Get yourself a password manager, right? And in those password managers, and, and this may not be a popular opinion, but you can put things like um, a credit, a shared credit card in there, right? And you can have some of that data there. So one of the options, especially if, if you're if you're kind of handling this for your younger your younger siblings or children or whatever you're doing, is have some oversight on that. Make sure you know where the money is getting spent. Make sure that you've got some you know some eyes on that so that, that they aren't getting 15 layers looped into an OnlyFans subscription like we talked about earlier, right? So that sort of thing. Um, make sure that honestly too, probably like like as an adult, like like in again, I'm thinking like family type stuff, make sure you're holding onto that card maybe for the for the for the younger folks. And just make just keep an eye on that spending. I think that that's the big thing is watching watching your transactions and being very mindful of where you go. It's really easy these days in a browser, right? So like if you're typing in like a we'll just keep going Bob'sgiftcards.com. Like maybe bobsgiftcards.com doesn't have um, HTTPS in front of it, right? So it, it's not it's not encrypted, let's say, right? It's just clear text. Well, you can see that up in your browser window and, and your browser will throw an error if that's a problem. So pay attention to some of the little nuances that we don't normally think about to make sure that your entire sort of online browsing journey is safe because that'll make sure that you've got some authenticity, authenticity and know where you're going. Yeah. And then if you are buying that gift card from bobsgiftcards.com, Make sure that bobsgiftcards.com shows up on the receipt, right? Like, so make sure that, that you know, like, and, and, and watch your spending, especially if it's, if it's, if that site is possibly, you might feel it's sketchy. Keep an eye on your spending for 90 days. People will, will often throw five, $10, $1 charges on your card without you knowing it. And, and it's kind of like playing penny markets where it's like, you'll eventually just charge a hundred dollars out of every person that you try to scam and then you're making money. So yeah, look for that stuff as, as spending patterns. Yeah, no, I mean, I think like one of the biggest things in that takeaway right there is at the end of the day is like, consider the source, 
mm-hmm. and, and be aware. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of, you know, we'll continue to talk a little bit more, going to pause for questions in a second, but like, we'll continue to um, talk about some additional things around this. But at the end of the day, if something smells fishy, if it looks weird, if it looks too good to be true, if it's coming from a place that you're like, oh, uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, you know, as security professionals ourselves, I think like we have a knack for probably sniffing some of that self out, that stuff out. But if you see the where the the for example, if you're getting a phishing email or something like mm-hmm. that, that looks amazing, and the email has like a ton of different letters or things like that that really in the URL or whatever it might be, like those are dead giveaways of trouble, right? This is not legitimate. It's nothing you've heard of. You're not you're not magically needing to pay an additional hundred dollars for holiday movies on your no. streaming platform just because like you know, it's a holiday season. So even if it exactly. says it comes, from, even if it says it comes from Netflix at, it's like Netflix at, and then like, like a cat ran over a keyboard and put a d- bunch of different level, le- uh-huh. letters. So, you know, I think that's, that's a really surefire, surefire, easy way for you to make sure that you are staying protected. Um, and you're thinking about this. So, um, amazing. We got some questions from the crowd. Um, so Leah asked, what are the most popular scam emails to look out for this time of year? Also holiday movies. Yeah. Would love, would love a little side note later. If you've got some preferred holiday movie viewing that I can add to my list, please also drop that in the chat. But you know, Dana would love to hear a little bit more about what you're thinking about, but the popular scam emails a lot of times are very much these ones that are, you know, they look way too good to be true. They're mm-hmm. saying like, get 70% off if you spend $3 or something like that. Or, um, you know, like a lot of times it's going to be things like, you know, work with our partner, work with our vendor, like you've won a hundred dollars or something like that as part of shopping. Those are all usually popular scams that do come into play. Um, so I definitely think that those are some to look out for Dana fill in my gaps there. I mean, I'm with you. I think about things like for like, um, major retailers, right? So I'm going to name stuff like, like when you like shop at Sephora or you shop at Michael's or you shop at, um, any of the craft places that send out those big, those big email things. It's like, Hey, here's your 8 million percent off with these 300 coupons. Well, make sure you know the source of that because that is too good to be true, but that's how they pull you in. Um, yeah. so, so, so a lot of those sprinkle through. Um, yeah. Also, also look, there's a lot, this is a lot of the time too where charitable organizations and charitable scam, if yeah. you will, not charitable scams, but f- charitable phishing yeah. scams occur, right? <laughs> and so just being aware of like your favorite organization, maybe asking for money this time of year to like save 18 dogs or some cats or some hamsters. Well, great. I, you know, you want to donate 100 bucks at the end of the year for Christmas. Make sure you know where it's going. Check yeah. the authenticity of that. If you have a question, you should always call. Um, I will chat in and, and, and pin this possibly for later too. Um, there is a lot of uh, social engineering and phone scams that occur during this time of year, Ooh. and it happens. Think about this: we're getting new device, like we get new devices this time of year, right? Family gets new iPhones or new Android devices or new laptops or whatever, and you're going through that sign-up experience, right? And in that sign-up experience, it's like, I need your first name, your last name, your mom's name, your social security number, your, and there's a flag social security yeah. number, right? Your credit card number to pay for your iCloud or your Azure cloud or whatever, another flag, right? Yeah. Um, I need your full address, another flag. So like when, when you're get, getting those devices onboarded, work with an adult and, yeah. and or work with someone else who's unfamiliar if you're not sure about the sign-up process and make sure that you are aware of where your data is going because people do get pulled in and, and, and nailed on a lot of those free subscription spam type of mailing list when they get new devices or new apps or new products. Yeah. And, and, and then you got to watch your email harder and your phone sometimes too, because people call now, right? They call from any other number or texts like these random Mm -hmm. texts that it'll be like, you know, going back to this one that I, I just personally received this the other day. It was a text that was like, your Amazon package is, Mm being delivered or is delayed or something, click on this link to make sure you can see the up-to-date location of where your Amazon package is. And it's like, 
I've never gotten that. I quite literally never know where my Amazon packages are ever. So why are you texting me about it? Because that's not something oh. that Amazon does. So, you know, and it goes to the next question that Bianca left, which is about, you know, she's a huge online shopper, really wants to understand like whether she should be looking up privacy and security policies of the shops before, you know, giving them any personal information, what you're responsible as a shopper yourself. Um, I do have to say, you know, there's, and this is going to be a perfect segue into some of our tips and tricks, which is the last part of the, the show, but it's like, we have to, at the end of the day, and if you tuned in last week, you know that I am just an absolute privacy advocate, but we have to be educated consumers here. So, you know, anytime that it's asking for a ton of information, um, you know, credit card, things like that, know the source for sure. So like a, a lot of these online shops, like I mentioned, like, you know, them, you didn't find them from a random Instagram ad. Like, you know, somebody didn't just like give you a flyer on the street. Like these are legit sources. So like for those, I think, you know, for the most part, you are probably okay without needing to scour the privacy online fine print because you probably also, you know, even I do not know what the heck is in those. But what I do have to say is like, you know, one of the big things and it's, we'll head in this direction now with the tips and tricks is don't store your credit card information or your passwords in your browser. I mean, like that is quite literally the number one tip that I want everybody to take away from this session, especially your credit card information. Do not leave it in the browser. You know, that just leaves it open to so many places. Um, anytime you could have like a bug or any type of malicious actor or even the website itself, it could be a device problem. It could be a website problem. It could be just a general browser problem. Having that information on there, especially when it's tied to like your first and your last name and like some other yeah. like pretty key pieces, don't, don't do that. Use a password manager. And I'll definitely let uh, Dana elaborate on that a little bit more, <laughs> but he mentioned it earlier. Like have a shared vault, have something like, make sure that don't write it on a piece of paper. Don't oh. leave it on a pad. Um, do that. Do that. So Dana, go ahead. Don't write it on your notebook, on your desk, <laughs> you know, all the things. Yeah. So, well, there's a couple of things too on that. So, so I would also consider, so, so you have like in iOS or you've got a wallet. And so you could also use your iOS wallet. Um, for doing that kind of stuff. So that, that works. And then, yeah, like like a password manager. So like, we're a big fan of 1Password, like, both in the family here and just professionally. Um, used yeah. it for a long time. LastPass is another great product. There's a couple of them. I don't want to pull like full favorites, but 1Password, yeah. um, I actually happen to use 1Password with my family at home. And we do keep a couple of credit card information, uh, pieces of information in there. We keep some... Uh, social security stuff in there so that we, we all have access to that stuff when we're filling out data. It is gated. So the, the younger one doesn't have access to everything, but we have access to dole it out. And anytime any, any of the data sets change in there, we get notified. So I have, I actually have alerts set up so that if any data changes that I'm aware of it in case, some, in case we need to be notified of something. The other thing I like about things like, like we'll, we'll just go with the one password example right now is let's make sure that you've got strong passwords, right? You don't have to have a strong password that debilitates you, but have something that, that is unique per, if you can, per merchant site that you're using. Totally. Um, one, password, one password has a great built-in thing called, I think it's like tower. And what that does is it goes and checks your, like all of your passwords that it knows about and looks for weaknesses, duplications, and known password uh, 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 exploitations, right? Dictionary yeah. attacks, basically. And it'll, it'll tell you which ones are weak. Well, leverage that, use it and change your passwords. Yeah. Um, and, and try to do that as do that on a semi-frequent basis. Like if you've yeah. got, if, if you've got, um, I don't actually think it ever matters if you've got $10 in an account or a million dollars in an account, you should have the same protection mechanisms deployed. What, what do you I, think about I, that? Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. And I think like talking about some of these password managers and things like that, like, especially mm -hmm. like a lot of us, I know corporate, like we use them for corporate reasons, you know, like I hear we use them extensively, um, a million different vaults essentially with limited access, which is always key. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to that point of making your passwords, you know, unrecognizable, undetectable on, 
you know, unrepeatable. All of these also have an embedded, you know, um, you have the integration to your browser, for example. So it's mm -hmm. an extension to your browser. It can save all of your passwords. It can automatically get you on to, you know, into the website as necessary, things like that. It'll also help you auto generate a completely random password. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're exclusively shopping kind of online, this is definitely something that I would like highly encourage people to do. Yeah. Um, and just like the same, the same thing essentially that we kind of have been, you know, preaching at is be an educated consumer and kind of make sure that when you are setting that stuff up, you know, we want ease and convenience, but the ease and convenience and the rush nature of all of this is also exactly what the scammers and the hackers are going to kind of capitalize on right now. So definitely be aware of that. And let me just like quickly go full honesty mode with all of you. I, you know, show of hands with everybody. When was the last time you changed your password? If it's been more than six months, I would love to know. So, uh, because, you know, I definitely have to say I have some that have, yeah, let's see. Um, I have some that I don't think I've changed in like a couple of years. And especially, Ooh. yeah, well, especially when you start to mm -hmm. see statistics, like, you know, the rise of like almost like 30% of cyber attacks, it's definitely, it's definitely pretty huge and pretty important. So, um, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, That's we're coming up on time. So I do want to see if anybody has any final questions or anything else that we can help, any best practices, last questions, anything else you guys kind of could think. Change password. <laughs> yeah, Clarissa, you got to change your passwords. Yeah, um, you do. Just a plug that we are not working with any of these password managers, but almost every no. single one of them has family plans that you can get yeah. on and definitely at least a free trial. If you want to start yes. doing that, yeah. God bless my parents, but they have a basket full of all their passwords and it's, Oh no, no so scary. It's a cute basket, but it doesn't do what it's my supposed dad to. had a spreadsheet. Of passwords. And I was like, dad, yeah, really? we were in the security business. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's tough. That's you know, really uh, tough. another thing too, to your point about yeah. the family subscription, um, I know for sure with one password and I know I sound like I'm partnering them up, but like, I, I just love the product. So, um, yeah. one password when you have an enterprise subscription also gives you a family subscription for free. So you actually don't really have any excuse not to like set it up in a way. Yeah. And I want to jump in on something that you said earlier, um, about 90, I think there's a stat somewhere around like 95% of breaches are because of like human error. Right. Yeah. And somewhere in there, like we're all responsible for the decisions that we make. If you want to put your credit card information in your browser cache, that's up to you, but know the risks that you're taking to do that, right? If it's more convenient for you to do that, like if the risk versus reward is there, yeah. then do that, right? I don't recommend it. It's not best. I wouldn't love, I don't love it. You have the same risks as using a plugin in the browser for a, a password manager. I mean, they're a lot less, it's like by, by a lot, but anytime you have to move data back and forth in between a data source, um, even if it's encrypted, you have an exposure risk. So like be in yeah. to your point earlier, be informed of what you're doing, make educated yeah. choices. At least if, if you have a problem, like you will know that you've done your best to, to, co to cover yourself and your family. I mean, and, and that's, that's the, that's the end of it. Just, just be just, it's really about awareness and increasing that awareness around these times of the year. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. We are going to have one final question here, um, around, um, targeted ads on things such as Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, or does that pose a threat? You know, the act of actually pressing on, you know, get 40% off if you shop at Saks Fifth Avenue, that does impose an issue. It's a lot of the like smaller kind of these like little individual ones. If you see a company that has like no comments or it doesn't have any reviews or it, it again, goes back to that same thing. Like if it's something that sounds too good to be true, not to be a total pessimist, but it definitely <laughs> is. Like this is the money making season for these companies. They want you to be purchasing things, but they're also not dumb. So no, we not. also don't want to be dumb and we want to be educated consumers. And I also just have to urge everybody for this specific topic, but also just the holidays in general, take a breath. Take a minute. Human error is huge Slow in this space, 
but in yeah. like life in general, you know, this is a little bit of like the no man's land as we head into the last two weeks of, of 2022, which is just nuts to say, but just take a minute to think about what you're doing and think about where your, your money, your choices, the things you're doing are going. And, you know, I think with that, we can say, have a very happy and safe holiday season to all. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll be following up on some of these questions in a little bit more detail with some additional resources for you in the blog to come in the next week or so. Um, and definitely tune in, um, in a few weeks in the new year, we will be running our third Christina's compliance corner. Um, and we will be talking about, you know, some additional topics that will be relevant in the new year. And then Dana and I will be taking the stage together again, a little bit following that. So definitely follow Leica on social media, on LinkedIn, things like that to stay up to date on everything that we're doing um, and to find out about our next chats. So appreciate everybody for tuning in, being engaged, and we will talk to you guys very, very soon. Have a happy holiday.